So here to solve this Lipps variation on a hexagonal grid that gets the name Slicey for the five tetrahexes that are shown. Um, this puzzle itself by Grant called Coral Anniversary is for his 35th birthday. The day we posted the puzzle is, is for 35th birthday. And, uh, and just looking through those regions of the grid, there are actually two small regions that have some quick progress you can make right at the start. So these five cell tetrahexes um, can never use this and can never use the center one. This is a forced C and this is a forced I shape. So I'm just gonna get started by marking those in and mark around them cells we can no longer reach because there aren't enough of them to form a tetrahex. You can start to put some X's on borders and see that, so for instance, around this, we can take one, but not both of these cells. So we never can reach through to this cell. We could take these, but if I take this cell, I form another C. So that's actually no good. So I actually only have these cells that I can use, uh, three of five forced. And for connectivity, this I doesn't have anything else that doesn't take this cell. So. Looks like this is another good start to the grid. Mark off this, mark off some of these around the C. Um, using the cell would put another C into the grid. I've got an unusable set here. I can't take these four cells together, so these are all marked off. These four cells I can't all take together, so these are now all marked off, so this has to be an S. That puts this into the grid. Um, down here I formed another five hex group, but this is a forced C as we talked about before. So mark that in. These three cells can't be on their own to form a tetrahex. So these five will be used, two of these three plus these. This coming in for connection, but we don't want to take this for another C near a C. So we take this for an L. So we got this start. Um, this looks like an interesting five cell pattern at the bottom here. It's a big shape that has either this L or this L, but both of those would touch the L above. So actually they're fully eliminated just because we can't get the right shape uh, involved. So for connectivity, it's got to come through here. And notice this bottom group is only connected through this cell. So you have a connection break right here, and maybe we'll just put this in another color to remember we've got a key part of connection down the bottom. We have uh, let's rejoin this other shaded group, some options up here. This five cell region has to take this cell and come through here, but we don't want to take a triangle here or a triangle there and the cell in common is the one we have to avoid. So this is a Y shape. And putting in that Y shape now forces some more cancellations in the grid. We can't come across these cells, which means we can't take these top three. If I took this cell here, I'm forced to put a Y into the grid and uh, there's no option that uses this top cell that gets enough spaces. So if a Y right nearby and no option for the other, these are all canceled off. This has to be an L. So mark these options off now in the grid. This set of five cells always has to use these three, so we've got some good progress from that. We can't come and cross this border, so this has to be taken off. We've got five cells in this region. And these three can't be used together, but we'll have to take two from above, one in this region, then one more. Canceling this off puts in this force C, which cancels this from being a C, it has to be an L. If I took this cell here, I'd put another L in the grid, so this is no good. Not seeing if there's any more to do right there. It looks like another place to actually make some connection progress is up top. So here we've got a region with six cells. We'll always have to take, it looks like these two. That helps us a little to the right. If I take this top one, I'm going to be forming an L. And if I take this one, I'm actually also going to be forming an L. So both of these would be an L next to this L. So this has to be a straight I. That now gives us these five cells. And if I don't use this cell, I get another I near that I. So I have to take this, but I also have to take these to get set coming out. So here's another space where we're actually going to have another connection cell and another connection cell. So we don't get to this top right or to this without these. So the, let's hold this towards the end, but we've got some structure of a finish where we've got to get all those cells marked. This region doesn't get anywhere without coming through this region. And this region, if it has to touch this region, has to touch through this cell and they can't use an L shape, so it has to use an S shape. That actually now marks this in and we'll always have to take at least these two. Um, we don't want to take an S, so we take another L shape. And so now here we are at the end. We've got this as the start, and we do need to have these groups connecting, so we can't come to the right here, and we can't reach this cell. This is near an L, so it has to become an S. So now we have this region that's got to connect to this region through one of these two cells. 
but it's not an L and it's not an S. It's certainly not an I or a Y, so it has to be a C. And we finish by getting those uh, connections in through the only remaining tech tracks as possible. So pretty good puzzle from Grant. We really like this twist on the Litz theme using the hex shapes, the SLIC wire, a nice set and some good patterns for him, particularly seeing through my notation how to avoid the, the triangles being fully shaded, essentially three cells that can't come together being shaded. You start to mark off whole sets of the grid pretty quickly. These regions subdivide and have cancellations. Like in this example, how we didn't have a Y here, we can't come through the middle, so it must be an L all the way to the left. That was really just from these two cells being shaded and this being a Y shape. Everything popped out from that. So it's a pretty fast forcing function once you know which key cells interactions to look at, and hopefully this video gave you some sense of how to do that for this puzzle. So thanks for watching, we'll see you again soon.